Geologist Reacts to America's Backyard Gold, Episode 3. I'm Matt, the prospecting geologist. And I'm Nick, last name redacted. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And uh, my background, I went to school for geology. Uh, I've done seven seven to eight years of work in the geotechnical engineering field, logging borings and setting up drill programs all around central Virginia and East Coast area, and I've been prospecting for the past 10 years now in Virginia, Georgia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Idaho, Tennessee, yada, yada, yada. That's my background. Here's Nick. (laughs) And I'm a Marine veteran who decided to go into teaching for 12 years and quit because Matt told me we're going to make all the gold in Idaho, and I've been poor ever since. And you never made a better choice in your life. I I will say that uh, I've I've made some money finding gold. I am now officially a uh, a hundred <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. That's about it. Um, we are gonna do a. This is a, both of our first time watching episode three of America's Backyard Gold. Um, so we're gonna get started. It's- Can't be risky. Oregon. Okay. I thought we were there. there. I thought we were doing North South Carolina, but okay. Pretty amazing. I've never seen anybody mining on the beach. Want to see it work? Yeah. Turn it on. Look at that. Very nice. Now it's just a matter of how much fine gold is in the sand. By the time it hits this ocean, it's traveled a long way. It's been beaten up, yeah. ground, it's yeah. turned into powder. Matt! Well, it's definitely the prettiest. Is that the gold I cube? Have. Huh? Is that the gold was, cube? Yeah, it looks like a gold cube. This is uh, PNW Prospecting. Okay, I know that name. Uh. We've Yeah, you've looked at some of his stuff. We've been actually, both of our YouTube channels are very similar in size currently. So. Okay. He's, yeah, he's out of Oregon. Pacific Northwest. Your favorite place, Nick. <laughs> you know what? He said he didn't see anybody uh, sand, uh, or finding gold on the beach there. If I see if I see that dredge, I'm about to make a road trip. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I mean, that is a good view right there. I'll say that. I, yeah, I'll give him that. A good camp spot. Uh, you probably can't camp there. Yeah, probably not. Well, you can do anything else, but you can't camp there. Well, I don't even think they can use powered equipment. I think I think I heard they were using the gold cube with manual water input, not even a pump. I think. Uh. We'll see. I don't know. Because, you know, it's Oregon. From panning out concentrates. What an amazing opportunity for people to come enjoy the Oregon coast and bring your family out and find gold. It doesn't get any better than this. That looked good right there, though. Gold is everywhere. Oh. That look chunky for beach gold. So I'm That's not sure what I'm if thinking. that pan is associated with the beach gold they found, because that looked uh, chunky for beach gold. Well, and but. especially when he just said it traveled a long way to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Not sure about if that pan is from there or not. Dog. Dog. Oh my god. There's an estimated three trillion dollars still undiscovered in America. Woo. And I want to help you choose your weapon. Find it. California go, baby! Oh. All you need Party. is basic equipment. You can get started with fifteen dollars and the skill to decode the land. That's a spot right there. Oh. Nick. I'm Dave Turn. For the past 14 years, I've mined millions of dollars of gold. Oh, yeah. Uh. And now I want to show you where and how. I've seen it all now, vacuum cleaner. Everyday people are catching it. That's insane. So that you can be the next one to hit it big. Boom, baby! Right uh. here in America's backyard. Gold is America. It's shaped our nation. And its allure today is as big as it was in the 1800s. 
it shaped our nation and it's on the California flag and these other states' flags and helped these other states even become anything. And then they go and completely ban it and make it so you can't do anything there. Yeah, you know, you can't have any fun anymore. Pretty much. Uh huh. Um. There's so much gold left. Still, people trying to change their lives with gold. Whether you're a weekend warrior looking for a few extra bucks, or like these guys who hit the golden jackpot, you can find it too, and without breaking the bank. I want to help people find some gold. This is going to be a great adventure. Hey, Matt. I'm in my own backyard, Southern Oregon. Ah, that's my dad. <laughs> Nick, is he your stand-in now? He's my stand-in there. <laughs> Where'd your head go? Quit drowning <laughs> in the water. Ah! He's drowning. <laughs> yeah, Bessie got him. <laughs> All right. People have been striking it rich in this state for 150 years, amassing an impressive $11 billion of gold. And that's not bad. I've mined in 14 different states across the U.S. But here, there are more places and ways to find gold than anywhere I know. So let's go out and get some. It is beautiful. Wow. From beaches Shit. to creeks to mountains. I'm going to show you. <coughs> I don't think that's a creek. Yeah, that's a big creek. <laughs> that's a big creek. Definitely. Then again, like we, we complain about the states here, some of the stuff Virginia and Georgia call rivers would be called creeks up in Pennsylvania and other places, but I'm pretty sure that does not qualify as a creek, but I'll digress. You know, who am I? Where and how, with very little investment and some ingenuity, you can join in Southern Oregon's modern day gold rush. We're headed to meet a guy who actually gets in the river and checks the cracks in the bedrock and he crevices and pulls the gold you out. See too? Nah. If you're looking to start your <laughs> gold no, prospecting go journey, go there's no better way to get your feet wet than in the shallow creeks of the Beaver State. First stop <coughs> is Oregon called the Beaver State. Yes, I, I've never heard that. Yeah, you don't know that? Uh, the first mayor of Oregon was actually part beaver. Yeah, I bet. Uh huh. <laughs> I'd never heard that, so. Um, I think, again, I want to say Oregon State is the Beavers. Is it? If I'm I, not I, mistaken, I'm, I'm. I know nothing of college football. That's your territory there. Uh, I've. I'm probably really wrong with that too. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I'm not sure. It's interesting. They haven't noted yet that like the creek and other things. It's all. I mean, I'm sure there's public areas the prospect in Oregon, but like most things are going to be claims. Um, and you either need to have a claim, or need to get permission to be on the claim, or file for your own claim on unclaimed land. So it's it's the claim system. Yeah, because uh, we met that guy. He uh, he lived in Oregon, didn't he? Uh, when uh, we were out in Idaho, uh, was Charles, it Oregon or Washington? Yeah, Charles might have been Oregon or Washington. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and he came over to Idaho for. But well, it's, it's not as dredging. once again, it's not as simple as just go more. walk into any creek <laughs> yeah. and start panning. But not so, what what should the gold look like out in Oregon? Then, like, is there? There's, there's big stuff. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Um, the one guy who we didn't get to meet out in Idaho uh, who smashed his finger in the river. I don't know if you remember oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he metal detects out in Oregon and stuff, and he has he has potato chunkers of specimen Ooh. pieces, gold through quartz, Ooh. crazy shit. Yeah. Okay. All right. And what... Uh, and we didn't find anything. Dan yep. was Washington more so, right? Yeah. Who? Dan. I don't know who's Dan. You're on your Washington trip. Dan? Yeah, Dan. What's Colorado? Oh, Washington. You remember when I, you misplaced something? <laughs> I didn't misplace anything. I know exactly where I left it. 
He's, and it was he, gone I don't know when I came back. He prospected in Oregon, but he's mainly, I think he was mainly Washington, but he prospected all over too. Um, yeah, yeah, we we've uh, now, blocked that part of my life out of my memory. There's huge, there's big gold in Oregon, just like there's very fine gold in Oregon too. It all depends on your location. So, all right. Whitehorse Creek, where all you need to do is go back to basics for your piece of the American gold dream. Yeah. Hey, Chris. Hey, Dave. Hey, Pleasure meeting. And miner Chris Shekla has created a unique and cheap way to do just that. Oh boy. What do you got going here? This is a little handheld suction device I made. There's a lot of bedrock down on the creek, and I'm targeting bedrock cracks. And I use this to draw all the gravel, and then I put it in a gold pan, pan it out. This just a little bigger one? What is nope, that? this is a viewer, underwater viewer. So after I clean the bedrock, I want to make sure I got all my gold. Mm -hmm. And then you just look straight down. It has plexiglass on the bottom. Oh, I see. All homemade. Matt. Mm -hmm. Who, yeah. Who had the viewer that I was using? Was when? That, I don't I don't know. I, I just remember it was probably probably about four inches, give or take. Marshall probably. Okay. I've I mean, I've made them too. I made little ones for dredging, so I'm gonna put my face in the water. Yeah, you never give them to me. Man. Made me get my beautiful hair all wet. That's why it's falling out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's awesome. You can reproduce Chris's budget busting tools with parts from your local store. But tools are worth nothing if you don't choose the right spot to use them. Yep. Like, <laughs> this bedrock right here is <laughs> super solid and smooth. Gold's yep. not going to catch in it. What about here? Yeah, Whoa. it's all fractured. Will you go into this, these cracks? Oh, no, we're going to pop that whole thing off. Oh, OK. What is shining right there? That's what I'm looking at. Is that what you see? <laughs> I'm, I don't know. I'm just saying. It looks like gold to me. It looks awfully suspicious from here. And that's crazy. Look at that beautiful little picker right off the bedrock. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> you, you told me. Lucky as shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just go walking by. Well, it, you know, like. I mean, it's, not, it, it's not impossible. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say it was staged because I don't necessarily think it was. That happens, but <laughs> the eyeball piece like that, that's that's rare. That had to move anything. Well, like, uh, what, what was that uh, story about the kid that, like, kicked the gold nugget or something? In... North Carolina. They're, they're, they better put that piece of history in there when they do the Carolinas, where the kid, <laughs> yeah, found the freaking, you know, I forget if it was an 18-pound or 27-pound gold nugget in the creek and took it to his dad, didn't know what it was, used it as a doorstop for, like, 10 years. God. I can't even imagine that. Yeah. The Reed Gold Mine kicked off the the gold rush on the East Coast. Be right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Clinker. Holy cow. I like this place already. <laughs> Chris yeah, has I done his homework. Yeah. And found a creek flowing from a known source of gold. The gold formed in magma deep in the earth. As it rose up through the mountains, it cooled, creating veins of gold-rich quartz. That's once again, that's not right. <laughs> it didn't form in magma. It formed from superheated liquids related to magma, but it didn't form in magma. Sorry. It's roughly enough for the general person to understand. Sure, I guess. I'm just going to nitpick it. Like, you could do a little bit more research and say superheated fluids from related to magma or things like that. Not they came from magma, because it did not. Not in that way. Magma. Good. Liquid hot magma. Sharks with friggin' laser beams. <laughs> Erosion by weather wore away the rock, releasing the gold from the quartz and washing it into the rivers and creeks where the heavy gold is trapped tight in the bedrock. The bedrock is an impenetrable layer of rock usually buried under layers of dirt. But in rivers like this, the flow has washed the dirt away, exposing the gold. Oh, I got you. There's bigger rivers that are with better gold, yeah. but it's all gravel pretty much. Okay. 
you know, or the bedrock is right next to really swift water. And this just allows me to really target bedrock because just about everywhere has been worked by now by yeah, someone. True. And that's your best chance to find virgin material. So here's why Chris has the spot. Get your notepad ready. He's got permission from the landowner. The water's just right, not too deep or too fast. It's downstream from a known source of placer gold. And the rocks have excellent cracks for trapping the shiny stuff. Okay, I'm glad I'm glad they yeah. didn't say that. He got permission from the landowner. Now whether they actually mean landowner, claim owner, or whatever. He got permission. He's done his research. He knows there's there was a gold mine in the area. Da 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 da. So all that. Good. It, but then he also gave up the other specifics. Like it's you know there's a source upstream historically yeah. so that's the I'm research always doing research for yeah. looking for where do, here's a source here's the vein trend where are the creeks and rivers that cross said vein trends yeah yeah so the type of research i'm always doing doesn't well, always work out but sometimes it does and then and then the stuff for the weekend warrior there it's like you know it's really shallow water it's easy to get to the bedrock which i mean that's not bad but for dredgers not looking i mean you can't dredge that you could you could it would just you'd be moving so fast upstream if not if as you fast could as you think probably but also if, i'm not sure if you, you could can flood dredge it. there and then you get yeah. a little dam you have to float it you could use dry we could use like a two and a half inch with a dry land suction nozzle but yeah as little like hand dredge is perfect for stuff like that yeah the gold came over this big piece, settled in here. So what we're trying to do is get this piece off, and then there should be a bunch of sand and gravel underneath here. Oh, yeah. We want to get eyes on it and see what's down there and what we want to target. Pretty good. Takes the reflection off the water. Looks awfully suspicious from up here. It does, doesn't it? I used to go across the creeks and pick bedrock apart, and I constantly had that gravel sitting down there. I, I could never get it completely clean. Yeah. And that's why I started using these suction devices. I like it. It works really good. I mean, you're sucking that right up. Made that little one to begin with because it was, you know, DIY, something yeah. easy to do. Yeah, that's, that's really where those little hand dredges, hand dredges, yabby pumps, whatever you want to call them, um, that's their purpose is really for cleaning bedrock yeah. that you've broken. They don't, I see people try and use them in like gravel, in a gravel hole they've been digging and haven't hit bedrock. And I'm like, yeah, like it's kind of pointless until you get the bedrock. No, that right there, you see how little material he's moving. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's for those cracks. Even that, even if you get down there with your hands and you're scooping it out, you can get a lot of it. It's still going to leave a little bit of yep. stuff until you get out of there. Um, and yeah, being able to then view and assess that you're clean and everything is good. Yeah. Are you 3D printing something right now? Yes. What is it? <laughs> Why? Because I want to know how long it's going to take. It's been. It had nine hours to print. It's. Uh, I can pause it. I think. I don't know if it'll mess it up though. Nah, it's it's fine. I just I thought I heard it. <laughs> okay, the audio is not that bad with it though. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> it's the it's the. It's the header box for the Latrap. Oh boy, here it's he goes. It's the revised version of my 3D printed header box for the Latrap that I designed. You should uh, round off those sides a little bit more with that thing sticking up in the middle. So it's. Well, I know I took this and I made this come out straight. I don't think it needs to be up at that angle. Okay. So, yeah, that that's the first half is printing. So for the the total thing, it takes 18 some hours to print. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then I ended up getting this to do more volume. How'd you get into this, Chris? About the time I was out of the military, these uh, gold shows started popping up on TV, and it kind of sparked this interest. Did a little research, went to my local river, and started finding flood gold. And it's been gold fever ever since. You were 
Uh, Navy for how many years? Seven years. Seven years. Navy CB to be specific. Uh, bulldozers, uh, dump trucks, loaders. Now you're talking my language. Uh, I don't know if I you know this, but they call me Dozer Dave. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and you were deployed? Mm-hmm. Uh, three times. One time to Iraq. Well, I appreciate your service. My son was Army, so right. I got a lot of respect for you guys that I appreciate it. went and did all that. Does this get you away from all that, kind of? I've been out for a while now. Yeah. I run my own small business and father, so it's, yeah, it's my time to decompress. Yeah. Does prospecting and camping help you, Nick? Hey, <laughs> I mean, yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, can't beat camping, yeah. I, I will say this. Like, in my time in Iraq, I loved the Seabees because they did some some stuff. Bring in the killdozer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, literally. But, yeah, I mean, you know, be, being out in the woods, you know, be, being there with the earth and everything, like, yeah, it does it does kind of take you away, so. Yeah. You're, especially when you're diving, you're in your own little world then underwater. Yep. Yeah, nothing else matters. You're just doing your own thing. Other than your hot water. Yeah, burning me. In your air. <laughs> yeah, can't breathe. Can't I'm can't cold. Breathe. Getting burnt like a lobster. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the fun stuff. The fun stuff, <laughs> yep. What? Wait, we did one crack? We busted one bedrock crack and we're like packing it up or something. Come I mean, on. he was hammering and chiseling it. I mean, he's literally breaking rocks, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> it took all of 10 minutes to do that. Maybe he's got a lot of stuff to show him I don't know, today. It's kind of nice out here, Chris. It is. Yeah, I've made a lot of memories out here panning some solitude, too. Take your mind off of stuff. Uh, some nice pieces in there. That's good, Chris. Dude. Chris's homemade tools costing less than a tank of gas, has come up with the goods. I like Chris. I like his style. Just, imagine, just imagine what you could do in Oregon and Washington. With and a California dredge. When you could dredge. Oregon, you still might be able to get. Because I do think they show dredging in here. So you still, there may be a path. But I don't know how difficult it is. I just don't know enough about their laws and regulations. But I know like on the Rogue River and big places like that where... People made a living from gold dredging. You can't do it anymore. That's. But I mean, with that little hand dredge right there, like you put in a good. I mean, and again, so, he's he's usually spending like what an hour with these guys. That's my something? question is once again, that much gold, how much time? We don't know. We don't yeah. know the specifics of that. If that's um, an the, hour, then you're making a living the off six of that. Inch, the six inch dredge in episode two. The, the guy, I think his name was Greg yeah. or something. They said he, four. He commented and said they dredged for about an hour. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they because they had not great clarity and all that. And it was. Stuff, so they didn't go long. What, was it the, uh, um, the, what was it? Like the rock one, um, the super big one that they went to, the big sluice. Where they were like throwing uh, barrels of rock in there. So it was the pay to play place. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he that spent one. like four hours there. Maybe, yeah. But like, saw, they don't really like hear how long. How was that? Just that one crack that they busted open? Did they do a lot more than that? Didn't film it, show it, hour two all day. I don't know. Yeah, so that uh, one right I there. I know. don't necessarily like how they do that because I, as you know, with like our sampling and what we do, like that's all very pertinent information. Yeah. Yeah, if that's 160 bucks and you did it all an day. Hour. Shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all day versus all day an hour. Like pretty uh, good. 20 bucks but, an hour. Well, yeah, 20 bucks an hour. That'd be all right. Yeah. So, but, I mean, if you're getting 160 bucks and that's an hour of uh, cracking rocks and stuff, I live out there. I would too. Yeah, shit. <laughs> yeah, nah. <laughs> that's, but, that's my life. I'm going to be living in a van. Down by the river. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm surprised you haven't yet. <laughs> working on it. <laughs> well, very methodical. You know, for a one-man crew, he moves some rock. When I started doing this, I didn't know anything about it. It doesn't take a lot of effort to figure it out. 
And if I can do it, anyone can. And I highly recommend getting out here and seeing the flash in the pan and just enjoying the outdoors. I'm happy. Learned something, found some gold. It's a good day. And the sun's out. It's bright. <laughs> <laughs> that That's special there. The sun's out. <laughs> Crevicing is a great way to find gold quickly and easily. But the bigger the river, the bigger the gold potential for the everyday miner. That's I'm headed not. to the mighty What? That doesn't hold true. The bigger the river, the bigger the gold potential. Uh, potential. It, it depends on the area and how everything's working. For East Coast stuff, and particularly Virginia and like the Carolinas and stuff, the richest the richest gold stuff was next to the veins and the small feeder creeks. The big rivers, it's much more sparse. Out west, it that's different. But Oregon is particularly known for what they call pocket gold. Where, like, you'll trace these little specks up the mountainside and they'll come to this point, basically, and then you dig down and there'd be, like, ounces upon ounces and decomposed bedrock down in the down in the country rock like wait Oregon, the gold huh? the gold will go down in the decomposed bedrock it's I or it's formed not, there like the, the way they describe pocket gold i don't know the exact some of it doesn't jive with uh a lot of the geologic stuff so i'm not quite sure what's going on but no it's like they there were quartz veins in the bedrock and they were or maybe it was another type of it wasn't necessarily quartz that was holding the gold it was something else and they've you get these pockets and it usually a lot of times if you read the literature be like there'd be three of them stacked on top of each other at varying depths but some of those some of the pocket gold stuff in oregon held millions of dollars of gold in those pockets oh my god yes and they still hunt those pockets i hope being that they're in oregon i hope they bring up pocket gold because that is an area that is particularly known for it hmm. okay so we'll see uh but now the bigger the river the more gold i don't it it really would depend on probably the gold uh the gold area that you're in probably well i will say that I mean, if you're talking about that little creek right there being a little creek versus a big river, I would expect a pretty good payout on a big river that was that rich as that little creek. Yeah. Especially if that was like an hour of gold. Yeah. So. Rogue River, which snakes 215 miles through Oregon. Now, look at that river. It's moving fast and deep, but there's gold there for the taking, if you have the right kit. I you want to take, hey, Matt, done. you want to take the boats on that? Yeah. <laughs> you used to be able to dredge it. There's videos, Bearcat, I can't remember what his YouTube name was, but I he made a living dredging on there. I mean, he had, he would have two to three ounce cleanups. He's one of the guys who kind of... <laughs> was in the realm of pioneering using the, the trap as their cleanup sluice in the back of the dredge. Um, and that was on the Rogue River, Oregon. Nah. And that's been shut down. That's been shut down since, I want to say 15, 2015, 2014, 15, 16 time frame. Um, so I'm interested to see what type, because like on a big river like that, like, that's dredge territory. I really don't know yeah. what type of equipment you're going to use to really do what you need to do to make money. Yeah, what are you going like, to... Sniping. I mean, you could snipe. You could get some decent areas to snipe, probably, if you're not getting killed by the current. So, uh, can you... Like, would you be able to set up, like, an on-the-river or on-the-shore air system to where you could dive and you go down there and pan or something? Sniping, you'd be using it as sniping. Okay, but you could so, do that. You'd be yeah, diving for hours. Air. I think you can still, yeah, run surface supplied air and stuff. But then again, died. I don't know the rules and regulations. So okay, all right. We'll see what they're gonna do. This before, I've sniped, but I always had like a snorkel with the hookah. They're gonna snipe. Supplied to your mask, so you're constantly breathing fresh air, um, and it allows you to stay deeper 
and for longer periods of time. Sniping is searching for gold in the bedrock of rivers, but hookah diving is more dangerous. So I'm linking up with expert Tony Brandt, who dives for gold when he's not busy with his day job. Oh. Cars. Nice car. Yeah. This is a beauty. What year is this? 94 Packard 1108 12 sedan limousine. That is incredible. Original to 34. So you're going to take me out sniping today? Absolutely. Now you got to tell me what's a hookah. I can show you over here if you want to come see it. For a long time, they've had gas powered ones, but they're big and they're heavy. Uh, and here recently, they've started coming out with these guys here. So this yeah. runs off of just a battery? Battery powers, yep. It's okay. all waterproof and in case. We've already. Yeah, so they've been starting to come out with more like battery powered hookah systems and stuff. And I had at one point on my John boat for Virginia, I had just the motor with one of the T80 hookah compressors set up to attempt to do some sniping, but I never got around to it. <laughs> Sounds um, all right. I mean, it would always just bring the dredge. So, like, <laughs> um, but yeah, so they're going to snipe. They'll snipe the Rogue River. You used to be able to dredge it. People used to make their living at it. They sh they've shut that down. It's a shame, really. Huh. Um, yeah. Hit all the shallow stuff that can be snorkeled. So now, because there's no more gold there, really, the hookah is where it comes into play. It gets us out there a little further, gets us a little deeper. All right, now you yeah. got to show me what's in that pan right there. Everything that's out of the pan is everything that I found where we're headed today. No way. Yeah. That well, was... That's a beautiful piece right there. You see what that is? <laughs> that's somebody's freaking. Found tooth. that down there too. That's Are eight, you that's, kidding me? That's somebody's too. That's old school. That's <laughs> an old school crown. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. For 150 years, the Rogue River has produced more gold than any other in Southern Oregon. So when you're looking for a spot, head for places where big gold has been found in the past. The heavy gold drops in the deepest. That is good and advice. Part that is good advice. If you want big gold, go to where big gold's been found. Which doesn't I've make found, sense, but it makes sense. That's how I've found my big gold. I've gone and got permission on properties around mines that have a history of producing big gold. This is what it comes down to a lot of times. Yeah, it's just go want big gold, go to where it's been found. Doesn't make sense, but it makes sense. Why doesn't it make sense? It, like, if... Big gold's been found, then it's been found. Yeah. That's but it makes sense because it's... He didn't get it all. Yeah, it's going to be the little big gold hasn't been found. That's not true either. They still pull ounce nuggets out of claim one. Really? Yeah. God. Usually once a year or so, somebody will get an ounce nugget. It's in the tailing piles. You got to know means and methods. What were they using to run their run their material? And if they were using rocker boxes or, or sluices where they were screening stuff, the big nuggets could have got chucked into the tailing piles, especially if it's a clay-rich area. So okay. you got to know means and methods and things like that on where then to search for that type of stuff because at least my understanding for Claim 1 is most of the big nuggets have come out of tailing piles. So, all right. Research. Or the Nerd. Moon. So we need to take the risk seriously. We're going to get some gold? Absolutely. Hey, Mitch. This is Dave. Hey, Dave. Dave. Tony's pal Mitch is joining us in case anything goes wrong. All right, Tony. I feel like I'm going to battle. <laughs> the flow here can be strong enough to fill an Olympic swimming pool in less than a second. So it's Holy crucial shit. you're properly weighted down. You can feel that, huh? Oh, yeah. So I got 55 pounds. That's a lot of weight. It's going to keep me on the bottom. And that... <laughs> uh, hold <Yeah>. my beer. <laughs> I, in, in any type of decent current with... Now, I don't know. Did we see what type of wetsuit they were running? No. Nah. I mean, seven he's got a mil, neoprene a, or neosport. With a 7 mil Farmer John. So it's 7 mil on my appendages. And it's 14 mil over my core. What I've been running, I've been running 70 pounds of weight to stay down in a moderate current. Um, and I mean, out, I had I had the 60 on in Georgia. Yeah. And it was keeping me down enough, but I mean, definitely my legs were floating. But um, I've got a 75, so. 
Idaho, Idaho, I was running, I think, the five mil farmer, John, and I was able to get away with just 50 pounds. Idaho, so, I didn't I didn't bring all of my chest weight. I think I was running like 30, and I added one of your belts. Yeah. So, so what, the more, 45? The thicker your wetsuit, the more weight you need. They're probably, if they're running 50 pounds of weight, they're probably running just a standard 7 mil. Maybe a 5.7 maybe a or something. I don't know exactly, but yeah. Yeah. That amount of weight in a moderate current, you're yeah, you're probably running a five seven five or a seven mil wetsuit. Yeah, and I think the bigger your belly, the more weight you need to. <laughs> I don't know, cause I need a freaking lot of weight to stay down, especially uh, when I'm in that seven mil Farmer John. But that's like I said, that's fourteen mil over my core. It's because you're filled with a bunch of bullshit. Filled with a bunch of hot <laughs> air. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. That way you can work, you know, without floating up all the time. So, but yeah, it's heavy. So it should be on. Go ahead and give it a try okay. and make sure it's going to give you ample air. A rechargeable compressor kit like Tony's will set you back around 650 bucks. Damn. Wow, that's actually, that's cheaper than I thought because like the... Uh, the older gasoline powered ones that I think were called like a brownies third lung, like they were, they're expensive. They're like huh. two grand or more. So for them saying that's 600 bucks to set you back, I'm surprised actually. Uh, I haven't done much research into the electric hookah ones. What they really need to do that would be nice is come out with ones that like accept standard batteries like say a cobalt 40 volt or uh like they have adapters to take like standard batteries that everybody has oh gotcha that would be nice i don't know what type of batteries they're taking because then you could just you could just be swapping batteries all day easily well yeah but how long are those last i don't know they haven't said yet i'll be yeah. interested if they do say <laughs> <laughs> it's slippery, be careful. But the key thing when you're attempting this dangerous type of prospecting is doing it with experienced divers. All right. <laughs> Can you relate, Nick? I mean, my first time diving, I was in my underwear and I was half toasted, so. A little but, different circumstances because that was not that bad. That was like a pond. That was a nine. Yeah, it was, it, it was slow, it was warm. It was shallow. That is, that is some of the best circumstances to like learn to hook a dive. Yeah, in. like shallow, warm. You don't need much weight. Yeah, unlike with uh, air and of uh, gold is where you find it. When yeah, in Georgia, there that was not the greatest circumstances. Poor visibility, fairly fast water, cold water. Air doesn't work right. Heat Having doesn't issues, work right. First time out for the season. Yeah, it wasn't the best for somebody new. Yeah, that was. was this isn't bad. the best for somebody new either. Nah. <laughs> there we go. That worked well, didn't it? Coming up. Let's get it. I show you what it takes to hunt gold at the bottom of one of Oregon's wildest rivers. Apparently oh, nothing. Well, we found some gold. What? I said apparently nothing because he keeps picking this shit up off the rocks. <laughs> how, how many times have you done that, Nick? What? Once, but Nick, it was after dredging a clean? <laughs> Pick gold off of bedrock? Oh, pick gold off bedrock? I don't know, like four times? Yeah, maybe. Memorial Day week and, 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 uh, yeah. River, big river. Yeah, it, not much. Yeah. On. Back to the road, river. The best way is we just go straight down to the bottom right here. We're okay. just gonna lay down, pancake out, and we'll just navigate around from there. Okay. I'm in Oregon's road river showing you one of the many ways and places to get gold in the beaver state. Beaver! On the hunt for big gold. Where the hell has I'm, Oregon ever been called the beaver state? It's, it's been like that forever, man. That's well, the, I guess. I just don't know. <laughs> it's the Mandela effect. You just didn't know. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm using a hookah system that provides a constant air supply. 
It means we can reach the bottom of this raging river where the gold is most likely caught on the bedrock. There's something right there. to it, but once you right get there. used to it, you can work quite a while down there. Those guys know what they're doing. So yeah, it's working. When you're reading the river, what are you looking for? Bedrock has to be cracking apart. Yep. Create spots for that gold to drop down into. Okay. Any big boulders down here are going to be good because uh -huh. that's going to act like a ripple in your sluice box. Yep. And the gold's going to fall out right behind it. It's the same technique that Chris was doing in the creeks, but this is the extreme version. And at some spots on the Rogue River, hookah sniping doesn't require a permit. Just a good dose of courage. Dave's doing great. He's still down there. At He's some spots, so really it requires a permit to do that in some spots. Interesting. I wonder if it's, like, I mean, we're, when we were talking about Idaho there, like, you could put a claim on places and there were some claims out there. Not a claim, but a mineral lease. Oh, okay. But, Definitely, yeah. so, I mean, with that, like, you had to be part of the mineral lease. Mineral no, they're, talking, they're talking like a state permit. They're talking like okay, government yeah. permit, not... Well, which we had to get for Idaho, too. Yes, for dredging. Yeah. This is literally for fanning, fanning sand out of the way with your hand. It's, it's for doing what kids do at the beach. It's for doing what kids do in a creek or river. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, no thanks. For a first timer. Well, how was that? Well, we found some gold. Right on. That wasn't a bad last found piece, a, huh? Yeah, you found a pretty good piece there. Yeah. This is my my favorite little spot. You know, it's a place where you get to forget about all your yeah. stresses. I ran my business full time for about 10 years and I was working 16 hours a day, seven days a week. My whole life is I've worked really hard and I've been trying to slow down the past few years. You know, reset what, and re zero oh yourself. Yeah. You're a lot younger than me. It took me longer to figure that out. And yeah. now I'm like, I want to do things that I enjoy. Yeah. Now let's see what we got. Got some gold in there, Tony. The little stuff adds up. It's good gold. It's just $10 of gold for less than an hour. But doing oh. this every weekend could... And it's not bad. It's not bad. I like that they... And I'm sure it's once again, you hit the right spot. It's a lot more. Too. Yeah. I like that they gave you roughly the time, less than an hour. Yes. Yeah, that was nice. I'm glad they so did So it was that. like 58 minutes. But, man, did they make it look like they were just hitting back to back to back to back. What do you mean? Like uh, the the footage from underwater is oh, like. Of course, boom, of course, boom, that's boom. what they're yeah. doing. They're not going to show you the other thirty minutes where they were finding not much anything. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, they're not like us. They're not like our <laughs> hour long video of finding nothing. Yeah, we 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 have a thirty minute long video, and twenty eight minutes of that is us breaking stuff and drinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know how you spot a YouTube channel that's either not showing you everything or not or faking it is if they're finding friggin amazing gold and nuggets in every single video and they're never showing the sampling, prospecting and all that type of stuff. Yeah, they're yeah. showing it then it, it yeah. Well, and that being said, if we ever show that, that means we found a really good spot. Because I am, like, when I edit these videos, I put everything in there to tell the story. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. 99% of it is not finding gold. <laughs> it's there in Georgia. We'll yep. get back on it here Memorial Day week. In Georgia? I got to drive down there again? Yeah, we got to drive back down there again. That's where we're going now. I hope not. <laughs> um, and then maybe a June trip. I hope. Somewhere. I don't know if we'll get permission for that one property, but maybe we'll be able to eke something out somewhere. Okay. 
we'll see what you find after I if the property owner ever gets me the updated hold harmless agreements back. <laughs> so. Bring in eight thousand a year in extra income. Even though I almost drowned, oh. no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but this is fun. It's a great experience and adventure, so yeah. I appreciate you having yeah, me sure. along for the ride. That was fun. I'm glad you came out. I'm glad we did it. Yeah, absolutely. So far, I've shown you two great techniques to find gold in rivers and streams. Whether it's gentle crevicing or extreme sniping, Southern Oregon's gold is a... I mean... I guess there's a distinction slightly, but sniping and crevicing are basically the same, the same thing. I guess crevicing is more dry. Sniping is more diving. That'd be the main distinction. Well, same tool one, set though. One generally. of them, you're beating the shit out of the rocks and breaking them up. The other one, you're down you, there with the turkey base. You will do that or... same thing in sniping too. You'll take uh, crowbars down there and do that. Yeah, but he wasn't really showing the crowbar. He didn't show that, stuff. but believe me, in sniping, I would 100%, you're usually there with some pretty good crowbars and stuff, too, if you hit the right, find the right crack and all that. So they're they're the same generalized tool set being the main distinction. Crevicing is more so small creeks, not diving. Sniping generally means you're wearing regulator or a... Uh, snorkel so now on to the beach Let's see how this works out yeah, i'm interested to see how, this, how they're running this gold cube accessible to everyone. if i see my dredge now i'm gonna step things <laughs> up another level all together and go dredging and since mining can be a fun family affair i've recruited someone special to help let's get some gold let's get some gold my 14 year old grandson micaiah lives up the road and he's joining me for the day. Have you ever dredged before? I have not, no. Neither have I. So we're both rookies at this. Mikhail. So they filmed episode three before episode two based on that comment. Oh, yeah. He said he never dredged before. Now, I don't know, if, is he not considering what he did in Georgia that he didn't dredge? I'm not sure. Well, he, I mean, it's a six inch. He, I don't know, would he just hop on the nozzle for that? I mean, I have no problem, you know, telling know. somebody to hop on the nozzle for a six. It depends on what he does here. I don't know. I mean, I've say. I've sucked my whole arm in that thing. I mean, I'm fine, ish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Occasionally, you're like ah. Yeah. <laughs> Let go. I'm I've gotten my toe funny. stuck in there. <laughs> I'm like no no. <laughs> Me on mining adventures since he was just four. And he's always up for learning new ways to put gold in his pockets. Ooh, yeah, baby. He's a real chip off the old block. Being with my papa out in gold mining, it's just more fun than like being at a family dinner. I can really just connect with him on a more personal level. Watch out, little goats. <laughs> you. Oh, you're welcome. You don't see that very often. <laughs> what? We're in Jackson County. Really? Tomorrow. They had goats as pets that they were walking? That is weird. Yeah, that's, I mean, well, that sounds like something your wife would do. Sounds like a West Coast thing. I'm that definitely sounds like something your wife would do. I'm standing by that comment. <laughs> no, I don't think she'd do that. But okay. No, it would be chickens. <laughs> Learn the ways of the force from one of Oregon's top amateur dredgers. Jeremy? Yes, how you doing, Dave? Hey, Dave. Pleasure. Jeremy Martin's working high in these hills on a creek that runs into the Rogue River. Ooh. Heading upstream and retracing the journey the gold has taken can be a great way to identify good locations to mine. Dredge spots right down the, the right. hill there, and actually, uh, I could use your help if uh, sure. you and Makai want to grab one of these Matt. pontoons, and I'll grab the motor, and we'll head on right. down. There. Are those keen floats? Yes, older keen floats. Okay. That's they all were I probably wanted. yellow at one point. What? They're probably painted. Why? Sure those, are, those are the older yellow floats. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, once again, Oregon, like, you can dredge, but it's not an easy process, and it's very limited on which waterways you can actually get a permit or anything to dredge. 
has right, to be like well, non trout, non yada yada, non salmon, a whole well, bunch of different stuff. My understanding look, is they made it. Different. Looking at that goal they're pulling out, I think I'd be willing to look at that uh, tape there to. Some of the Idaho guys still do it. Still have claims that they are they were working to get a permit to dredge. I'm not sure if they got it and were going to do it or have. I'm not sure. So yeah, I mean it's doable, but once again, it's much more limited than what it used to be. Okay. Can't go on the Rogue River anymore. So, like any of it, from what I know, not a hundred percent on that, but from what I know, yeah. Oh yeah. Got it. Easy. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's got to be 300 pounds, Kaya. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Wow, this is quite a spot. I love it, man. I really enjoy being out in the mountains. I like that attitude. So the river God, comes that's straight gorgeous. the dead ends up into this um, exposed bedrock. And it takes a sharp bend. So this, this is the inside corner here. Like Jeremy, you want to choose a section of the creek where the water is forced to slow down. Slower speed means less force, which means anything heavy like gold drops to the bottom. Jeremy's spot looks legit. I bet you there's a bunch of gold, and I'm really excited to find it. Well, we'll start moving those big rocks. All right. <laughs> Here goes. It's one rock at a time. You can pick up you know what, Matt? for around 1500 bucks. <laughs> ah. That's... That's definitely the difference. I mean, look at that picture right there. You don't see boulder fields like that where we've been going in no. Virginia. Like, it's, man, but the West Coast. It's different, yes. Very much so. Um, and even, I mean, there there's spots in Virginia. There's spots in the Carolinas. There's spots in Georgia yeah. that have big boulders like that. But generally, the East Coast Piedmont region you're not going to have massive boulders like that in most cases. Yeah, we're we're not worried about buying that dynamite stuff. What what's that legal dynamite stuff you use to blow yes, stuff up? Yeah, blaster. Yeah. We, we we don't have to worry about that. No, and we don't have to worry about like if you watch uh Brian Wilder's stuff American Gold Prospectors where he was up in Maine, they more so have this in Maine and he was getting into like the still so it's like a still chainsaw, but it's a big winch thing on there that you strap it to a tree and it winches 4,000 pound boulders out of the creek and stuff. Wait, like a handheld chainsaw? Mm -hmm. It's, like a, it's an attachment that goes onto a still chainsaw. But, it's a winch attachment. But in your hand? You, it's usually strapped to a tree. Oh, uh, okay, you're, gotcha. You're okay. still actuating it with your hand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're not like holding the thing, pulling on it. Obviously, that's not gonna work. Okay, we gotta watch that next. <laughs> but uh, so the northeast is different than the southeast in that way too. The northeast definitely has much more boulder, cobble ridden streams like this, whereas the southeast Piedmont does not. Is that uh, Canada Ice Age push down boulders or something? Or uh, it's related to glaciers, but not that they were pushed down. Um, they the when the glaciers came through, they scraped all decomposed soft stuff off, gone, poof, pushed away, okay. and it left hard bedrock. So now it cracked and broke and all that type of stuff. And yes, you will have glacial cobble and boulders in there still too. Okay. But uh, it's just a different. It's a different uh, environment overall to produce that versus the southeast is different than too. Southeast has been in subtropical tropical environment for the past however millions of years where chemical the chemical erosion or chemical. Uh, weathering has outpaced mechanical weathering so that's why it's all very soft and decomposed is literally the big rocks that used to be there have decomposed to the point that they fall apart and they're no longer rocks that's what's happened to the boulders <laughs> that's, They've that's literally like the decomposed that's like the firewood we were trying to burn the other night over here <laughs> Um, and that that's one of the big reasons why out west versus the southeast is different with we don't deal with boulders. I have rarely, if 
Once or twice, maybe have I run into a rock that I could not move by myself. I was going to say, yeah. It is rare. It's one of those where, like, somebody jumps in, you're like, thanks. Like, I got yeah, it, yeah. but yeah. thanks. Yeah. It's rare to run but into yeah. ones that you can't move. Unless yeah. you're on specific formations that produce harder rock and boulders. Yeah. But we, we're generally not dredging on those. But it, And then, you know, we talk about that. Like, those are the standalones. And then we go to Idaho and we have garage-sized boulders. Yeah, you work around them. <laughs> It's like, um, I don't think I'm moving that bitch. I don't think I'm moving that. No. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that is a difference. A little different. But dredging is strictly regulated. If you want to claim a stretch of river and hunt for gold, you'll need to contact your local government authorities to make sure you have the proper permits. Well, you know, this is a perfect spot for us to go and uh, get suited up. Yeah, let's put this in the water. That'd be step one. So this is your suction. Yep. The water okay. goes in there. Goes in. Shoots out there. Through there. And it comes out here okay. at high speeds. Yep. And when it shoots out there, it creates a suction on this tube. Dredges suck up gravel by Oh, that picture. <laughs> Using it's a pump, horrible. water is sucked up through a hose. As it passes across the suction nozzle, it creates a vacuum, sucking up gold and gravel from the riverbed. The material and water then flows over the gold catching sluice, where the heavier gold is trapped in the grooves known as ripples. Dream map. What's up? I said dream mat, not mat. Yeah. yeah, dream mat. They got dream mat. That's an older keen crash box four inch. Um, that's, that's a beautiful diagram. <laughs> that's a diagram. Like, come on. Can't you can't stand it? I love it. Oh, I didn't oh, even pay God. attention. Was there was there air on it? I think there was. Did you? Yeah, have... they had. Look, he's got a hoop. He's got a regulator in his mouth, Nick. So I hope they got air on. Well, it. we just watched some guy that was hookah sniping. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. Pretty sure he didn't have a like dredge. T80 air compressor on it. Dream mat. I don't know what they have in the front there. Hopefully, they got some sort of crash plate type thing. I couldn't see, but was that was that a Honda motor? Mm -hmm. It's an older Honda. It had that white gas tank. Yeah, it's an older Honda, but yeah, it's a Honda, so it's still good. Hondas yeah. are just, yeah, great. <laughs> right now, I got Dave Jesus, no. Hang on. Huh? What'd you do? Hang on. Matt, there's a little air you use the circles, Matt. That's 30 seconds. The heavier gold's trapped in the groove. Oh, we gotta watch this again. What are you trying to do? Yeah, there's the T80. Green Matt. Okay, go further. That's a tiny dredge. Is that a two and a half or a three or something? That's a four inch, pretty sure. That's Is just it? a wreck though right now. What? Like how the dredge looks like it's sinking? Somebody or knows. Somebody else is on another air system. Dave oh. Turin's probably on a separate air system, but they are just in a tangled friggin' rat's nest of... Another air cable. I don't a, know. A, tangled, a tangled rat's nest of West Virginia blue coming in there. Yeah, but like, yeah. But yeah, air, so the red. white goes over there. He's he's on air. I can't tell if another one of these guys is on air, but Jesus, why? You're in a tangled rat's nest. Well, if he was to join me while I'm dredging, I'm going to tell him to bring his own damn air because yes, I can't breathe in the first place. I understand place. that, but, like, why do you have a hundred foot of cable? I did, and it's, 
And it's all right there. It's all on top it's of your just eye. Right here. <laughs> that gets annoying. <laughs> Funny. Right now, I got David Micaiah clearing up a section where I pulled out some big rocks. They're doing great. And I love it. Somebody That's else. Suction. terrible suction. That looked like, yeah. I hope they had a clog or something because that is horrible suction. Yeah. You should be eating through that. That's. Yeah, that is not good suction. I hope they have a clog. Besides, hey, <laughs> this is a win-win. Dredges are a great way to run a lot of material. The bigger the dredge, the more material, <laughs> and the more chance of gold. Matt. That's a little better there. Yeah. The box is playing out, but I'm seeing some black sand go through. I think we're good. After an hour of dredging, right. let's see what we've got. Got an hour. Want to get that side, get that bolt out. Well, let's hope we find some gold. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> There's me. <laughs> There's Nick. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Right now. Gotcha, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> when we pull it out, we'll take it up. I've got some panning station up there. If okay. you want to, guys, want to pan it out. That's on some good claims right there. Yeah. Well, That's... I did a lot of research. You can stake a claim of land in Southern Oregon for as little as $230. What's your plan, do you think? You're going to make a living at gold, or are you thinking of... You can, yes, you can stake your own claim for probably around that federal. Generally speaking, the vast majority of claims on good known, around good known sources and mines will be all claimed up. Yeah, and well, that's probably why he said as little as two hundred bucks, because you get around yeah, the you, good stuff. There's still there's still undiscovered spots out there and in everywhere throughout the U.S. Pretty much. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, buying a claim is a different story. On that, what the is. and that that dredge still looks way too small to be a four inch to me. Pretty sure it's a four inch. I don't know that box. That box doesn't look wide at all. Maybe it's a three inch. I don't know. It's hard to tell, but it looked like a four inch to me. Could be a three. And it um, literally had a handle on the nozzle for you to hold, which I mean, I kind of don't hate that idea. So you should probably I mean, build ours that does ring. too. Both of ours do. No, now you got a you got handle. a forward handle. I want a side handle. I want to handle it like this. So that way, when I'm dredging, it's. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. about it it's gonna be retirement nice. for me if i can find a spot that will pay me enough i would switch over professions in a heartbeat like i did see one right there and really and didn't find see gold. gold boys we're seeing some gold <laughs> oh my gosh holy cow <laughs> that looks good nice reference nice day with yeah. gold like Size that, reference. for just one Size hour, reference. throw in. a penny in there. Jeremy could. Something, you're super zoomed in. Like, I can't tell. You're, they're very zoomed in, so those are flakes. One it looks like it, but that's that's the bullshit the rookie does there. Yeah, like. It's like, look at all this reference. gold. It's like, those are those are uh, fly poops. Just yeah, really a, zoomed in. <laughs> a finger, a penny, something of scale. But yeah, those, I mean, those definitely are flakes. They're nice flakes, no doubt. Some That's, of those might be special flakes. Stickers. Uh, stickers. Smokers, I don't know what the hell he calls Special flakes. Yeah, stickers, liggers, nice something like that. 40 bucks. But. Yep. Make a haul of $5,000 a week in this spot. That's a bricker. First day dredging and to find that amount of gold. That's pretty amazing. You know what you're doing. It was pretty fun. Kaya, what do you think, buddy? That's awesome. Just being able to. That was to not two hundred and forty dollars worth of gold. I don't know. I mean, uh, uh hang on. Well, two forty would be what? Make a whole thousand dollars a week in this spot. That's a four picker. grams. First day dredging and to find Come on, that amount of right? gold. Man, picture That's again. Pretty amazing. You know what you're doing? It's pretty fun. Uh, you're so good at this. Kaya, right there. Well, but he's playing around at the bottom, though. Chuk, I, I, 
it's so, hard to estimate, but I don't. I see maybe two grams of gold. So he's saying roughly smile. four grams if he's calling it two forty, give or take. Yeah. Um, I mean that that does look good up there, and he's messing around the bottom. So is that top stuff all the fines, and then they're showing us the flakes at the bottom? I'd say still five thousand a week is very optimistic. I mean, I feel like there's at least one piece of gold down here, which you can't see because I'm doing it on my computer, but. Probably, yeah. I Actually, I mean, it looks like in right front of... here where my mouse is, can't see it. Yeah, it looks like in front of his finger that might be gold there, and then I don't know, I what mean, would be... maybe, but five thousand dollars a week is very optimistic. I feel. Well, like. if if you dredge for an hour and you get two hundred forty dollars worth of gold, you're talking yeah. sixteen hundred a day. Yeah. That yeah, that's where you get those numbers. It won't hold, is the thing. Is you don't nah. need to find a new, new spot. All spots are limited in time. But okay, I would definitely think, take five grand. Oh, I'd be super happy. Yeah. That's awesome. Just being able to go down there and do that for a little bit. And Looks like cornflakes. Like That's great. <laughs> Jeremy's done all of his homework. Not necessarily close to the source because they're pretty well uh, flattened. And flat and round or flat and smooth. Yeah. And if you take care of the per permitting, if you claim these up, you can go find gold in the streams in Oregon today. Thank Coyote, you. it was fun having was. you with me. Thank Once you again, for me come down. Every year it seems like you get a chance to go mining with us. Yep, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Coming up. It's making all kinds of noise, Dave. It's getting it's crazy. I show you <laughs> where on. you can supersize your hunt for Oregon's gold. One of the first big nuggets that came out of the creek was a 57 ounce. What? Jesus. One of them. After a long night of bringing home the bacon. And 100% discreet. Treat ED with doctor trusted medication. Get started today at hymns.com. Just know something wrong. Oh, I good. It wasn't the show. To find something. Gotta be right at the end here There's a lot for one truck. And there you go. Boom. It's a good find. We did it. It's not going to make it on the streets today. It didn't work this time. We got it. Okay, we good still? Uh, yeah, 29 minutes. Uh, 20, oh, we got 25 minutes, so. Okay. Back to it. I'm in Southern Oregon. A gold catcher's paradise, where the places and ways to find gold are endless. The rivers here are quite literally running with gold. But if getting wet isn't your thing, there's plenty to be found on dry land too. I'm going to meet a pretty well-known metal detector. I'm not a metal detector guy, so for me to go out here and metal detect and find gold, I'm really excited about that. John yeah. Bomka and his wife Sarah have been prospecting full time for the past 10 years. When you're uh, metal detecting, does size matter? Sometimes, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Gold Monster 1000, a white gold uh, map, 24K, white gold 24K, and a GPZ 7000. Okay, so he just asked, does size matter when you're gold detecting? Yes and no. Depends on what you're doing exactly. Okay, so that big one in the middle is a lot big bigger than the other hits two. big targets deep. Then again, the GPZ-7000 can pick up some pretty small stuff, too. Um, okay. But generally speaking, your bigger coil is going to get you greater depth on targets. Smaller coil is going to be for working craggy, exposed, like bedrock for small targets. Okay. Um, GPZ 7000 can pick up some very small gold for how big the coil is. I'll say that. Really? It's also an $8,000 metal detector, so... Shit. Is that one of those ones there? Yeah, it's that middle one. Oh, okay. So, no. bigger is better than, is what you're saying? Not always, no. I mean, you didn't refute it in your statements there. I mean, I, it's It depends. Are Every either of those little ones going to beat it? Huh? Are either of those little ones going to beat it at anything? On small gold, yes. The smaller coils there will probably pick up smaller, finer gold. Okay. That's a big one to miss. 
And Especially how, if you're getting into like cracks and like hard to reach areas where the big coil can't get. Gotcha. Stuff like that, yeah. And how many beer cans would I find with all of them? Lots. <laughs> Probably your own. Yeah, good possibility. <laughs> Not all the time, though. <laughs> <laughs> After reading The Rock and speaking to local experts, Josh and Sarah claimed this historic mine site. After I started exploring, I discovered that there's a geologic anomaly here where it was a source gold situation. Okay. So up above us here, about like 100 yards or so, is where this bedrock ends, and there's a T intersection with a fault. Oh. And my guess is, at least, that that was the source yep. where the gold was originally at. And it flowed down the hillside. Josh believes the gold source is just up the mountain from his claim. The gold hasn't traveled far, so it's retained its nugget form. And it's those nuggets now making their way down the hillside that you want to chase. So why toss rocks? Is that just to get closer to the nuggets? The nuggets, in theory, are going to be sitting close to bedrock. OK. Yep. And so we're removing uh, overburden, is what this is, so we can hopefully get down closer to be able to reach them. OK. We've cleared off down to the mushy bedrock there. Uh huh. And that's where we found the last piece of gold. Oh, really? The nails that we find, Yeah. they're square nails. OK. And square nails, as far as I understand, were discontinued around 1900. You think this was actually worked prior to 1900s? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. we've uncovered some ground here. Might as well. Metal detectors range in price from $100 to $10,000. And they're the God perfect damn. piece of equipment. You're not gonna. There's none for a hundred that you're gonna use to really hunt for gold. Yeah, but five hundred minimum usually. Ten thousand dollars, man. Yeah. GPZ seven thousand, baby. Jeez. Your equipment for hunting nuggets hiding just below the surface. Are you hitting something there? Well, it's something. It's a target. You want to scrape some off there? So when we first heard it, it was a much milder signal. Yeah. Um, I, and we're digging down to it. It's making all kinds of noise, Dave. It's it, getting it's, crazy. It could, <laughs> Come on. One of the first big nuggets that came out of the creek down below us here was a 57 ounce. What? Nugget. Not joking yet. 57 ounce <laughs> nugget came out of this drainage? Ah. Oh my yeah. God. Found in 1858 and worth over 70 grand, if Josh is trying to manage my expectations, he's not yeah. doing a very good job. Yeah. 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 Big faster. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the hunt now. I'm tired, Grandpa. Oh, think... That's too damn bad. <laughs> Why'd you pause it? Guys, this. You got it. Oh, yeah. It's right there. Nail. It's on there. <laughs> Where nail? <laughs> Welcome. I to know what he said. <laughs> Welcome to metal detecting. <laughs> yeah, that's my life right there. But it's usually a stupid beer can. Square nails, all that type of stuff. Yeah. That's the, uh, what are those? Detecting. What? Those those little like nails that were holding on the uh, fence there that I kept on sucking up. <laughs> yeah. That's one yep. of the things with metal detecting for gold, though, is you dig every target. You do not try and use discrimination. One, the GPZ-7000 and pulse and induction detectors generally don't have discrimination. But even with the detectors that do, you dig every target. Because what happens if there's a nugget next to a nail and the nugget's a little smaller and the nail's right there overpowering it? Yeah. Or you have a piece of gold that's coated in iron, natural iron. It's usually in hot ground. Like, there's a hole. There's so many factors involved with it that you dig every target. Nerd. Yeah, and like I said, when I found, the day I found, like, four nuggets, I dug 150 trash targets. Nah. In 90 degree sun, that was fun. <laughs> it is a bit of history, it though. Is, it really Some is. guy had to pack that up here probably in late 1800s yep. to build his family a house. Yep. And he dropped the nail yep. so we could find exactly. it. Exactly. It's been waiting for you the whole it's time. Been waiting for me to find it. 
What keeps you going? What's your motivation? Mining in general it seems to create a direction in our life. And if you can find some direction in whatever it may be, that's, that's worth a lot right there. It is. It's healthy for your mind and your soul and your body. My father, he's third generation prospector miner. So about 10 years ago, I found myself uh, motivating myself by looking towards not only my future, but looking towards the, my children's future. Uh, I somehow managed to talk Sarah into turning our lives into gold miner lives. Sarah, you think he was crazy? Maybe a little. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but you had kids. We had a kindergartner and a toddler. And he decides to just pack up and go gold mining? Mm -hmm. Sold our house. Sold your house. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So you bought a RV? We had a Matt. School bus. A school bus. <laughs> yeah. It was a great family. There it adventure. is. I wouldn't change it. You're still with him. We're here today. Good. <laughs> Nick, you need to find you yourself a gold it. miner wife, apparently. Yep. Uh, taking applications currently. So you can go live <laughs> in a van down by the river. Yep, pretty much. Uh, instead of farmersonly.com, this is dredgersonly.com. Miner, not minersonly.com. That can be construed wrong ways. <laughs> oh, bleh. yeah, exactly. That's why I was like, uh, <laughs> no. Think for gold. Prospectors is really know well. There you go. And it's that chance of hitting a life changing payday that will keep you coming back time and time again. What's the biggest nuggets you guys have found? So uh, about 10 years ago, my parents come up for a weekend, right? And my dad, and he dredged for a little while, and he's like, oh, I gotta take a break. You know, here, Josh, take over. So I hop down in the hole, and I see something wedged in the bedrock. And here's what flopped oh out of there. My God. An unbelievable two ounce gold nugget. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That is so cool. Really it's far from the source. No, no, I find Even it interesting that, so they think now, it's hard to say, and his, I think that's from this area, but they he's thinking he's like a couple hundred yards from the source. That nugget's not a couple hundred yards from the source. Well, he was talking about dredging, too. Did he say dredge? I thought he maybe did. So I'm, maybe I'm they pretty sure he said he was dredging. So They were down in the drainage, and yeah, I could see that a little more. Okay. Yeah. But, man, a two-ounce nugget? I want to find a two-ounce nugget, Matt. Yeah, I want to find, I want to, I'd like to find at least a half ounce and then get an ounce too. I'm at like 12 grams right now for my biggest nugget. It's not quite half ounce. I just want to get the two ounce one and then I skip all those steps. Some of the places I want to get to that have a history of that stuff, are just, they're hard to get to. Because right. the river, the river levels just, they kill us. Okay, you just got to come down here for three weeks so we can go bust our way into them. Like that eight foot gold mining hole. Yeah. You find a nail. It's still a good day. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, it's a great day. Exactly. Skunks. Up, I take you beyond the hills into the gold rich mountains of Oregon. Visible gold right out of the source. That really is a game changer. That means there's gold down below it. Places and ways to find gold right in my own backyard. And. If you ever need a little inspiration and insider knowledge, the local gold shop is the- I order stuff from there. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> yeah, Armadillo Mining Shop. Yeah, I've ordered stuff from them. Because nice. they have Keen stuff, but they ship faster than Keen. If you order directly from Keen, sometimes Keen takes a ridiculous amount of time, like five days to even get it shipped. So I find it's just better to order it from somewhere else because they ship faster. Who- <laughs> uh who did uh, Tom buy his dredge from? Proline. No, oh, and that took like a year? That was in the middle of COVID where they were having supply chain issues uh, and all that type of shit. But yeah, it took over a year for him to get his. Yeah, couldn't get a dredge, but man, I can get me some alcohol. <laughs> what? It was easy to get alcohol. Like, it ma uh, they made it even more easy to get alcohol than it was before. You get it delivered to my door. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Legit, you get it to go. <laughs> the Armadillo Mining Shop. Never been there, but I've ordered stuff from them. So, place to go. Are you Shelly? Yes, I am. I'm Dave. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. I like your store. Well, thank you very much. So, have you seen like a renewed excitement in gold? It's done really well. There's gold all around Good. here. Yeah, more than they want you to know about. So. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Would well, you want to see some gold? You got gold here? Shh, don't tell anybody. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Pretty much what you're going to get in our area is going to look like this. Uh, 
That is beautiful gold. Yeah. You gonna tell me where that came from? No. It's a secret. Uh. Yeah, yeah, secret creek. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> secret creek. Secret tunnel. Shelly isn't sharing her secret spot. The, the Alabama Missile. Guy who is? Look at the devastation. I mean, it just burns this forest. Thousands and thousands of acres. Holy cow. 50 miles away, David Bergelt's family oh, have been mining this remote mountain location for three generations. When you're hunting for Oregon gold, a safe bet is to head for the mountains, getting you closer to the source of gold. Not I'm always Dave. true. My name's Dave, too. Hi, Dave. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Frog I started Island. off thinking that same thing, that I yeah. needed to go to the mountains. That's where the gold would, cut, would have come from. <laughs> You know, it's crazy, though. <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies. <coughs> um, you know, it's crazy. It's like, he was just talking about the devastation out there. Like, the West, I mean, uh, you know, here I am in Central Virginia. We had a, a couple big fires here recently. Yeah. You know, like 2,000 acres. Yeah. That's nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Like, and I didn't, like... I've seen forest fires out on the East Coast, but when I went out to Colorado and saw them firsthand, I was like, there's nothing. Like, it's just, you know, it, it had to be millions of acres. Like, it was yeah, so stupid how big that stuff was. Like, it's, yeah. like, it's scary, like, when you see that. Yeah, definitely, 100%. <laughs> He's just driving every through time, it. Every time I've been out west... Will always hit a hazy, smoky day where you smell yep. burning forest fires from hundreds of miles away. Yep, that that was me driving into Denver. There, it was just I couldn't see the mountains, so I was like ten yep. miles out. I was like, I should have seen them a long time ago. And yep, yeah, just insane. Yep, sure is. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, how old's your cabin? It was built in the twenties. My folks and my grandfather purchased two hard rock claims in 58. The gold is something I depend on to make ends meet. Uh, my best year was 10 ounces of gold. Wow. David used to mine the gold in the rivers on his family's claim. But recently, he's discovered a new potential deposit of gold that's so unique, I've never seen it before. There's an ore body here that runs north and south through here. And right here, it's 104 feet wide. I've got a disseminated quartz scene down here in the creek that I've been working on. An ore body is a gold-rich vein of quartz normally lying deep in the hard rock. But here, part of a quartz vein is exposed at the surface. That rusty colored dirt, that's that disseminated quartz. Now, naturally occurring acids are dissolving the rock and releasing the gold, meaning we can easily dig it out and run it through a simple gold-catching sluice quite a main structure you can see the different layers here pretty rare that there's this much acid that caused this stuff to dissolve i've never quite seen a vein structure that the acids have taken all everything and broken it down matt normally yeah accessing gold from court what's he mean uh come on geologists say things I mean, he's not used to seeing decomposed, decomposed quartz veins and bedrock like that, where that's like all we deal with. Okay. Um, then again, he's not really ever done hard rock either, not that I know of. And I think some of the most of the places, he, like some parts of Oregon, are going to be much more similar in ways to the southeast, with their like almost subtropical type. Lots of rain, lots of humidity, lots of all that type of stuff that then decomposes bedrock. Okay, so when we're when we're breaking apart decomposed bedrock, is that hard rock mining light version? Kind of. Okay. It, it would technically, well, if you want to go into some of that stuff of where we just were down in Georgia, they call it the Dahlonega method where they were literally using water monitors, so big water cannons, to shoot and wash away decomposed bedrock in the sluices and capture the gold. So they were using placer methods on 
quasi hard intact gold in in the bedrock, even though the bedrock's completely decomposed. Huh. The plaster methods on yeah decomposed bedrock. Okay. And in Georgia, they call it the Dahlonega method. Um, similar to what this is here, you got a decomposed ore body there that's to the point where he can literally shovel it into a high banker and just capture the free gold using plaster methods. So now, should I should I have blastered? Should I should I have blasted uh, more of the bedrock down there in Georgia? No, probably not. Okay. Um, now the thing is with how he's doing this, you would also probably want to capture most of your quartz and crush it because there's a good chance that if that is an ore body and there's free gold that you're able to just get from sluicing it. There's probably gold still in the quartz, possibly a substantial amount. And okay. they did do that with the Dahlonega method in Georgia, where they would wash, they would monitor the hillsides with these water cans, wash it in the sluices. But then I think they would take the oversized stuff that was getting discharged out of the sluices and they would crush it and run it through a stamp mill and process it further. Because okay. they knew there was still gold in that quartz that won't get caught in the sluice. And that would be an issue with this type of stuff, too, is there's going to be gold in quartz that won't get caught in the sluice. Okay. Hey, um, should our next video be on the ad on the screen right now? Moon, you want to go do Moonshiners, too? <laughs> I want to go visit them. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so this, is, this goes into, like... Uh, hypergene and hypogene enrichment and all that type of stuff where as your rain water meteoric water percolates down through the uh ground it strips out and and dissolves most of the easily dissolvable minerals and stuff and will decompose that and will turn uh your various minerals from sulfides and oxides. Okay. And it'll free that gold that's caught up in the sulfides over millions of years and stuff. So you get this, you'll get this uh, super gene enrichment is what it's called, kind of right in the contact and in above the water table. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what's going on here. It's a super gene enrichment probably is what it is. And that's probably what pocket gold is. This could be quasi pocketish gold type thing here. Um, same thing happens in the southeast though too, where we go. It's okay. Super gene enrichment, and then once you get below the water table, you lose the oxides, you get into the sulfides, and it gets really hard to process because the gold is no longer. You could crush the rock, you'll get some free gold, but the gold is chemically bonded to those sulfides to the point where it doesn't matter how much you crush it, it's still part of that sulfide. Which Can you, you like, don't, put it in can, vinegar or something? There's Now you get into nasty methods of doing stuff. You can roast it you, so you can burn it and oxidize it to then crush and get free gold. And this is then where you also get into some of the nastier methods of, uh, like, mirrors chlorination and... Uh, cyanide cyanide type processing cyanide dissolves gold really so they'll modern type stuff and i don't know exactly when but they'll they'll pull the hard rock stuff out they'll crush it down pulverize it put it in a pile and they'll use sprinklers or some sort of system like that to just be spraying cyanide over the pile Ooh, and it's called heap leach and then it goes down, the cyanide goes through, dissolves the gold out of the sulfides and other stuff. And then it's it's in a big bait in a big contained area of stuff. And then that cyanide that then goes down and they capture is what they call they call it impregnated. It's impregnated with gold. Hmm. And then they take it and process it and pull the gold out of the cyanide and repeat the process. So but Good first day spot. Yeah, I get it. Super genes. <laughs> most likely it's a super gene enrichment of the quartz vein and stuff. Or body system above the water table. Free yeah. gold. 
he's probably if he's not capturing the courts that he's then processing through that high banker he's probably losing a substantial amount of gold out the tail of that high banker because the thing is is even back in the day the vast majority of gold bearing courts that they mined did not have in most cases visible gold that you would see hmm. and it was still considered worth it to mine if you have visible gold in courts it's usually extremely extremely rich so he should be crushing his tailings which requires tunneling into hard rock and dangerous explosives but it's also where you can claim the biggest rewards in gold mining the gold down below could be more concentrated if that was 10 feet lower it'd be solid rock but because it's at the surface mother nature has already broke it down, and that's why we're using plaster techniques to get the gold out. There's definitely potential. Down below here are some of the richest creeks in Oregon history, and we've witnessed it. We dredged on a creek that's just downstream. There's gold in the streams. Where did it come from? Probably here. You want to run, David? I'm ready to quit. <laughs> ready to quit? OK. You see any gold? I see muddy water. Muddy water? <laughs> We're not mining for muddy water. Could we throw it in a bucket and take it up to the fire? Yeah, we could do that. I really like your cabin. I like the fact that your dad, your grandpa mined here. That's pretty cool to me. That's... Yeah, we've got some history here. That's, that's kind of what it's all about, right? Yeah, my dad and my grandfather and my grandfather. So this is not a place, normal, would like this is not a normal mining claim either. This would be what is considered a patented claim. Meaning means, they physically own the land as well as the mineral rights. Okay. It's turned into private property. Gotcha. And there used to be a process to be able to do that with mining claims, which is now... I don't think you can't patent claims anymore. So that's, it's probably grandfathered in at this point. Oh, yeah. Wanna... Yeah. Patent claims are now their private property. They're patented back. They're private property, basically. But okay. Since I don't know when exactly, you can no longer patent a claim. Um, gotcha. That's why he can have a house on it and stuff. Because with a normal mineral mining claim, you can't build on it permanent structures. Because you don't, you only are, have, you're only leasing the mineral rights. Okay. Like somebody could literally come and set up camp on top of your claim and camp there. You have no control over that. You don't own the surface. But they can't take a they rock. They can't interfere with your mining and they can't prospect or mine. Okay. But yeah, so he's on a patented claim. I would say so. It's now based. It's private property. Um, yeah, can't do it anymore, which kind of sucks. But like most things, the federal government screws up and does. But yeah, yeah, pretty much. I'd like to really share it with other people. Yeah. What would your dad say? Now? Like, my dad would be proud of me. Yeah. Because I made a living at it. Yeah. You know, for ten years. Phenomenal. I moved a lot of rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's see what we get. A couple pieces up here. Uh huh. Heck yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. Visible gold right out <laughs> of the Three bucks worth of gold. Good. Yeah. The potential income from hard rock mining could be millions. But to maximize on a spot so close to the source, you need to dig deeper. Have you ever thought about looking for investors? I thought about it, yeah. Because to me, it takes a drill program from here. Yeah. You've proved there's gold there. And if you could get a drilling permit, and uh -huh. start drilling it, I really think you've got some options. Drilling The fact that it. there's gold at the surface, that really is a game changer. That means there's gold down. He would need investors because drilling is not cheap. Yeah. Exploration yeah. drilling, you're talking in the realm of, especially if they got it, if they're doing core, rock core. I don't know what it is cost out there, nor what the prices are currently, but like $80 a foot. Yeah, when was the last time you dealt with those companies? 2019. So what was that? Five, hard, five years ago? 
Hard rock drilling, though, back then was $80 a foot at least, if not more. So that's not including that's not including mobilization fees. That's not including per diem. That's not including a whole bunch of other stuff. That's just permit per foot of the drill going down. Um, drill programs you need investors. They cost millions upon millions of dollars. Man, um, he could pretend. I don't know what the rules and regulations for that type of stuff are, but given that he could quasi do his own hard rock mine and probably do well with the right smaller equipment gotcha now running a drill program because there's most likely historical documents too that delineate a bunch of the stuff out there pretty well but drilling expensive <laughs> i'll blow it we didn't process very much material what a wheelbarrow load or two and and we've got a dozen little specks of gold there. That's interesting. You know, for Dave to start a drilling program, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. But he can start building evidence to prove his case that there's good gold here. Then he might get an investor here. Coming up, I show you gold in a place that's beyond your wildest dreams. Very nice. There's gold here at the beach in Oregon. Pretty amazing. It doesn't get any better than this. If you have moderate to severe ulcerative colitis or... Right now. Oh. Good to go. Uh, yeah, you better back it up a little bit, though, but... I don't think so. Yeah? There you go. Play it, fiber. bitch. With the same amount of fiber as... Matt sucks! Metamucil gummies, the easy way to get your daily fiber. From its mountains to its rivers... Oregon's rich with places where you can find gold right now. But my home state has one extra special spot that's blown me away. There's gold here at the beach in Oregon. Pretty amazing. I love it. Cape disappointment. And it makes sense. Oh my God. The placer gold carried that's in Oregon's beautiful. rivers ultimately ends up here at the Pacific Ocean where it's washed up on beaches. I've come to the most famous one of them all. The incredible Whiskey Run, where prospectors have been hunting beach gold since the 1850s. You know, there was a town here of about 5,000 people, and they were on this beach, maybe 150 years ago, finding gold. As early as 1852, gold was discovered by a group of sailors on Oregon's wild coastline. And now, historic rains over the past couple of years have washed more gold onto the beach. Are you Gannon? I am. Dave. Nice Gannon Smith you. has been hobby hunting beach gold for years. With more. Yeah, so he's PNW prospecting. Is he? Okay. Yeah. Um, that, those old, uh, like, tree trunks and yeah, stuff I there? Okay. Um, they are using full names, too. They're using first and last. I didn't remember if they did that in the first and second episodes. Yeah, I don't remember. Not allowed to know my name, even though it's literally written on the screen right now. <laughs> Mine's a little more ambiguous. Yeah, a little bit. More than $2,000 recovered so far. He's following in the footsteps of his grandfather, who mined Whiskey Run in the 1960s. I've never seen anybody mining on the beach. What do you got going here, man? Anywhere in Oregon from the Eugene line down, we actually have a lot of sand that has a lot of gold in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a gold cube system with a built-in classifier. Gannon's using a gold cube to separate the fine gold from the grains of sand. A gold cube is a stacked sluice system that uses water and gravity to push material through each tray. As the heavier gold is caught in the mats, the lighter sand washes away at the bottom of the cube. And I suspect a lot of the gold that we get is actually going to be trapped in those first two nugget traps. But he'll need a supply of piped water to make it work. In Oregon, we can't run motors on the beach to get our gold. So what I'm having to do is I'm going to take this piping and I'm going to pipe just, it, water it, down. It is ridiculous. like. You, you can't run an electric bilge pump with a battery. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, it's going to make that big of a difference there. Like, but you can 
It's literally the ocean. You're not going to run out of water. <laughs> and they, they just they figure out other ways. Good for them. But like, law, just stupid laws like that. Like, really? Like, a electric motor, a little bilge pump is somehow going to destroy everything. Yep. Do you want me to get started on this rant, Matt? No, probably not. We don't need to waste all that time. <laughs> we we don't want to get kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> Down the creek, and nice. what we're going to actually be doing is using a road cone. <laughs> but That's awesome. This works really, that really well. That is minor ingenuity right there. The nice thing is it, with buddy. the gold cube, unlike with like gravity dredging, is like you only need 850 gallons per hour to only. run the gold cube. That's only. Not much. That's not much at all. Uh, talk to my water and tell me that's not much. <laughs> I mean, you can literally run the gold cube on your hose bib output at home. It's it's about equivalent. Okay, so I can't do it here. Got it. Well, I can't help it. Your water sucks or your, yeah, whatever. Your, I'm, your I'm lucky if tank. I get like three gallons a minute, so I'm, I'm not hitting that number. Yeah. <laughs> Guess we can't start a gold mine in your yard then. Oh, well. Nope. Motorized pumps are illegal. So Gannon uses the power of gravity and some hardware store piping to create pressure. Good, you got good water. Do I see it work? Yeah, turn it on. Look at that, very nice. Yeah. He's got it figured out. You know, that drop is supplying plenty of water. He'll classify, find the fine gold, and now it's just a matter of how much fine gold is in the sand. If you want to start feeding this thing while I get more sand, I can do that. I am seeing gold on there already. This top piece is just a screen. It just classifies it. Uh, you don't want these rocks blocking up your sluice. Your black sands go down through this screen, and then it gets trapped in these little grooves. And I don't know if you saw. I don't know if you saw the one thing that I posted, but they up on the Bering Sea, they did a clean out where they used the gold cube, like four of the riffle tray stacks, and they got 25 ounces. God. But then Brian, Brian Wilder of American Gold Prospectors took all the cons that had all the gold pulled out of it and re-ran it and got 1.8 grams. That's it. It's it's a a loss rate of 0.23%. Yeah, I was going to say that's I mean an extra gram's definitely nice. He, he said it's 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 not worth. It took him hours upon hours to rerun that. There were six five gallon buckets of concentrates. God, I was going to so say it's, it's it negligible what you're talking about. Of time to yeah. redo all that. It's it's not worth it. Hundred percent not worth it. You're you will get more gold by just diving back into the Bering Sea and dredging for a minute. That's a good point. <laughs> like yeah. Um, hey, so why aren't we you, dredging out there yet? And he was, and they were using a stock gold cube. I think they had, you have your slick plate, and then they had four trays. But you need that much when you're dealing with 25 ounces. Yeah, I was going to say. They filled, the first two trays were chock full of gold. Like, gold is literally going into the lower <sighs> trays because there's no room left. God. Um, but yeah, it had a capture rate of 0.23, or a loss rate of 0.23%. Okay, you so gold, gold cube's a good setup is what you're it's saying. It's a good setup, and that's why I also say, like, I'm not going to say, is Dream Mat any better or is it any worse? No, oh, boy. You're wasting your money because you, at a loss rate of 0.23% for a hobby prospector, you'll never make your money back on what you spent on that Dream Mat. If, if it improves on that 0.23 percent you'll you could run the math on how much gold you'd have to run to make back the but it's 30 ish dollars and say you run through like 90 to 120 dollars in matting and you have a 0.23 percent loss rate or a point sorry it's gonna maybe it's slightly better at a point two zero percent loss rate 
the hobby prospect or the weekend guy out there. I said also maybe better. I don't know. Well, I will say with the dream, Matt, it is it seems easier unless you're dealing with clay and stuff to clean out. I mean, with the gold cube, maybe it's a little easier to clean out. It's more com it's a convenient thing. The other issue thing. I have with Dream Mat in the gold cube is if you pull up and look at it, this the if you look at this picture right now or the video where it's paused, that's vortex matting that you see in there. It has a lot more capture area than what the Dream Mat that would go in the cube would have. Okay. You would need more stacks because you're going to, especially if you're running 25 ounces of gold. Because you're literally going to fill like four trays of Dream Mat with gold. Yeah, but the hobby yeah. prospector's not going to be running 25 no. ounces of gold. Because if I do that, I'm the, I'm living there. But I'm just saying, like, yeah, with that type of stuff. Like, the gold cube doesn't need altered at a 0.23% loss mm. rate. That rounds to 100%. Why are you All right. Hurry up. You're losing me. Any little tool. Right. You can pack this in a backpack <laughs> and take it wherever you want to go. A kit like this one is perfect for catching fine gold, and it doesn't come any finer than beach gold. This is the hardest gold you'll ever catch. It's traveled the farthest. This gold has moved yeah. hundreds and hundreds of miles, and that tumbling action and water washing over it, it breaks it into the smallest pieces. If you're searching for this tiny gold, <laughs> Matt, the black sands, that's not which true beach either. Gold usually runs with. Gold doesn't get smaller as it travels, unless you're talking like it's a quartz crystalline piece. Then, like, little tendrils can maybe break off of that. But once it's gold in the river, gold is so malleable, it does not get smaller as it travels. The but, I mean, hitting, if, you, if you keep on beating it up and bending it back and forth, it's going to break. It won't break. It doesn't. Unless you have like a really long piece or something weird, all it's going to do is just get rounder or flatter. It won't really break apart, especially once you start getting that small. Once you get to really fine stuff, it's not it's not going to. Like that that fine of gold that they're getting started I mean, it's, life out in the quartz vein probably that fine. It's going to get pinched between rocks. It's going to hit stuff. Like th there's going to be little you pieces realize, that break like, off. You quartz, you know, quartz sand, like your normal beach sand. Yeah. Like quartz sand, once it reaches that size, doesn't get any smaller really. Once it's uh, to that small little sand size of a quartz grain, it's Erosion is not really able to break it down smaller. Uh, it's because it takes 15 billion years, and it's only at 13 saying, billion in most, years. In most circumstances, small gold started out as small gold. So, just say I beg to differ. Also, search the back of the beach. Often, big storms push black sand towards the dunes concentrating it into a beach mother load. People don't realize that the Oregon coastline changes dramatically. So I live up at the border of Oregon and Washington, and I go to a lot of the beaches that are just on the other side of the Columbia River. Yeah. And for a number of years, we were doing very well. I believe my best trip up there was eight grams in two days. Wow. Nice. And a couple years happened, big storms rolled in. It has been completely Ooh. buried. So this is the last bucket? Last bucket, and then we can see what kind of gold we got. Well, that's definitely the prettiest backdrop I've had for panning out concentrates. Yeah. Pretty nice. Well, this is some tough stuff. This is some of the hardest gold I've ever panned. I'm telling you, it's hard. So tell me a little bit about your grandpa. He was a prospector out here. He worked the same sands that we did. Uh-huh. Did you ever get an opportunity to prospect with him? Only when I was a kid, unfortunately. OK. So he died before I got back into gold mining. Oh, that's too bad. But he would have definitely enjoyed what we were doing today. What do you think? I think that's pretty amazing. Pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot of chunky gold in there, actually. Jeez. Oh, it is for beach gold. It's pretty good size. Yeah.
Huh. From north to south, there's 360 miles of Oregon coastline. So could back hold gold. at the beginning, I know we had commented on that, but that's chunky for beach gold. I would not have expected that. No, I figured it'd be a, like a shit ton of fly poop or something. That's what I'm more so, yeah, used to seeing for that type of stuff, especially yeah. with the guys like up on Lake Superior and other places who get like that type of beach gold. It's like just powder. But I you expect. figure when they're when they're not in a drought warning there, they get stupid amounts of rain. And if you can't dredge it and it's getting knocked loose, which I know you don't agree with, but I feel like yeah, this is West Coast stuff here. This is different. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Change your story, buddy. It's because not all places are the same. <laughs> one but, one size does not fit all. Um, but, I mean, how far can a chunky gold travel before it doesn't look chunky anymore? I don't know. That's a good question that has still not been answered. There's a whole bunch of different things pertaining to that. That There's so many factors involved that it becomes difficult. I mean, you look at uh, the the guy with the, the hand dredge thing, like he had all them flakes, and they were all pounded flat. Mm -hmm. And then you're out here on the, the coast there, and it's chunky. So either there's another source out there, or Maybe. magic happened. Yeah. Um, yeah, it could just be there are sources. I don't know enough about Oregon gold on where it is exactly, where the sources are. Yeah. Um, but also, when I say chunky with that, I just meant it was it was kind of big. I I wasn't yeah. able to see character enough to say like, oh, it's close to source, but it looked large for that type of stuff. Beach gold, I think like the stuff that I panned out last year. I'm like, Nick, there's 50 colors in the pan, and you're like, I can't I, see it. I see a flake. I can't see any of the other ones. Yep. Yeah, you can literally see gold that does not exist in my space. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I need to also where we go Memorial Day week, and I need to repan a bunch of it because you might not have seen a bunch of gold. Yeah. So next time you're out here at the beach, instead of building sandcastles, I've tried. why not build a family <laughs> legacy and start hunting? Uh, I've tried panning at New Jersey and Delaware and all those places. I've not found a single speck. All right. Too far removed. For gold. Well, Gannon, this has been a pleasure. It's been fun. It didn't get any better than this. We got gold, we got a sunset, and we got some whiskey run whiskey. Get out of here. There Cheers. you go. Cheers to gold. Cheers. the gold and the sunset. Nice. <laughs> That's it's gotta, like I'm that... liking the potential of being on the show. I can bring beer. Yeah, I know, right? Here's my toilet bowl wine. Shut up, Mike. <laughs> From the smallest creeks. Holy cow. I like this place already. <laughs> I <laughs> would too. Rivers. We found some gold. We're on. And the wild beaches of the Pacific Coast. But I am seeing gold on there already. There is no doubt that Southern Oregon has more opportunity to find gold than anywhere else I know. There's a resurgence. There's more people out here panning and you know, sniping and dredging than I've ever seen before. I think they've found solace and they've found happiness. Doesn't hurt that gold hit like $2,300 an ounce. I know, right? Yeah, but how many people are finding even an ounce of gold? Yeah, man. Out here, chasing gold. Since filming, Chris's underwater adventures continue to bring in the gold. Man. Jeremy's dredging? Nice. We got a uh, over a quarter ounce in just a few hours. Has gone from strength to strength. Well, I'm excited to see what this next year brings. And Josh <laughs> continues to find Oregon gold. There it is. Look at it. Nailed it. Way to go, guys. Okay. What, did it start over or something? I don't know. What do uh, you think? I mean, I I did like that. I mean, and this is terrible to say, but the uh, metal detector guy got skunked. 
that's that's I mean in gold prospecting if you're going to go out with somebody and try and find gold that's your most likely one to get skunked yeah it's like hey I'm going to no take doubt. you to my best spot and we should find something you're like well that sucked that's the way it is I mean we drove cross country and basically did that so it happens it's prospecting yep. it is what uh, it is yeah so I, I do wish they would emphasize that a little bit more in the show though yeah, that, that's one of my bigger critiques. It's a lot of Sam, and and that's one thing they haven't really. Nobody ever talks about. Nobody likes to do sampling. Yeah. Well, it, he's made mention of a couple times now. I think last episode and this episode especially uh, about like doing research um, and find and finding where the gold was coming from. And yes. Research but, is one thing, and I do a lot of it. Yes. <laughs> you still need to sample. Yeah. 100%. Research does not replace sampling, does not replace getting out there and figuring out. Research tells you the general area of where the gold should be. Sampling tells you where the gold is. The problem is, if, if they were to make a show, like if they were to follow us on a show and from start to finish, from the research, from the BS conversations we have on the phone, uh, me yelling at you, you sending me down somewhere to pay on, me getting skunked in the majority of the places, and then dragging the dread, like from start to finish, everybody would lose interest probably the first five minutes. Other than a, our stupid shenanigans and shit breaking and all that type of shit that brings people. Well, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. that's the other thing. Like, you get to the point where you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna bring the dredge down." It's like, yeah, and it's fucking broken again. We don't, we don't need anything to insert drama. There's plenty of drama. Of just I know, right? Shit. <laughs> it's like we just don't catch it on camera. Yeah, Very rarely. Cool. Yep, that's that's the problem. Try and kill Nick on Idaho and the river behind him. Nobody's filming. Man, that one. Oof. I'm happy I had that knife. Already yeah, jumps off the boat. I got boat one of those. Ever. Nobody's filming. Yep. First time. Second time we were. First time we weren't. That first time was worse, though, because she went through the rapids on that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and um, I had to motor down to go get her. I was like, nah. No, and, that's, and that's once again where, and a lot of, it's, it's interesting that a lot of prospectors will take issue with the show. Because it doesn't show all that, but also, once again, the show is not for prospectors. No, it's it well, no it's audience. so I I still like it so far. Yes. Um, I I would like a few disclaimers in there about it's not this easy. Yeah, it takes. But but this episode again, they did show a skunk on there with the uh, the metal detector. So, yeah. but you're also looking at one out of I don't know how many people were we at right now, like twelve, fifteen, something like that. I mean, they did show then also the one. It wasn't a skunk. The one sniping on the road river was like ten dollars. Yeah. Um. Okay, well, yeah, so this this was the hardest the beach, episode then. The beach prospecting was, what did he say? Was it 60? Something like that, yeah. $60. So, like, those ones were not... I, it was more realistic in that way, that it wasn't showing some of these crazy clean outs and crazy amounts of gold. Okay, yeah, so... I mean, I, I guess I get it. You start out the first couple episodes and, you know, show them pretty rich everything's around there. And then you start calming it down a little bit and show more of the reality. Like, okay, I get it. I wait, do wait until he comes to Virginia and we get, like, three fly poops. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, we're not... I doubt that'll happen, but you don't. Nah, it'll be fine. Uh, the next, the next episode, I think, is the Carolinas. I don't. Well, know. you said that last week. I thought that because I thought that was going to be the end, but apparently there's at least four episodes. Yeah. The Carolinas. I know there were a couple guy. I know a couple guys who filmed on it and stuff in the Carolinas. So like, I know that one's coming. Well, we did East Coast last week, so this week it was back to West. So yeah. 
and uh, skipping right future, over the Midwest. I suspect if it's America's backyard gold, like you need to be hitting some of these places where you're not finding much gold. Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, you find good. You can't find good gold in Indiana. <laughs> Ohio, where you can't send the dredge hose down a 30-foot hole. and Ohio, you can find pretty good gold, too. But, like, Pennsylvania, where you can't run equipment, so you're, like, happy if you find a couple of flakes panning in a day. But, like, that's a backyard goal. Like, yeah. do you really skip over those states just because it doesn't have much of a history or as much? Like, it's there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So that's, yeah, I'd be interested to see if, second seasons come and all that which my inclination is that it is it i mean the show seems pretty good so far i don't know what actual critics are saying or anything i mean we don't matter that much Wait, did but you look at rotten tomatoes or something Does that i don't, have, I don't know TV would that shows? even be on there <laughs> i don't i but, see some stuff that people post on our youtube about some of them kind of mehing it yeah. And I see it in other places. Like, they're not real miners and yada, yada, yada. And, like, it, it's not made for prospectors, for one. So. <laughs> yeah. But we're reviewing it as prospectors. I, yeah. We provide a little more insight into a lot of the stuff. Yeah, some of it's good, some of it's bad. Sometimes YouTube, well, no, YouTube doesn't hate Discovery. us. <laughs> Bring Discovered. me in on the show as the as the uh, I'll be the Mike Rowe character. The Mike Rowe character, and I'll be the idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, man. But no, good show. I enjoyed it. I did like that they. Uh, there were definitely some more real moments, realistic ones. Yes. With, like not everybody's finding hundreds of dollars every day out. Yep. Um, do you have those days? Yes. Do you have a lot of days without that? Yes. More so, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, even with big equipment, though, some of the thing, too, with that. Yeah, it really sucks when you have a six inch and you're running a $20 day. So, <laughs> pretty yeah. much. We were sampling, we were punching hour long sample holes. Yep. So. We, you know what? You can put a dress on, I don't know, bear shitting in the woods or something. There's some saying about that. Do you, not, do you want, not want to go back to that property, Nick? Do you not oh, think no, there's Oh, no, I'd go back there? in a heartbeat. Do you not think there's good gold there? And the next time I'm just going to live there. Live just, there. You're not just, getting rid of me. <laughs> just set up my camp. Good show. Uh, interested to see where fourth episode goes. And is there a fifth, sixth? I don't know. I don't know. We thought there was only like two Probably or three, three, so whatever. Shows how informed we are with things. Yeah, I know, right? But yeah, I that's, hope you guys that's how much we're watching. reacting. <laughs> if if you guys made it this far, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, we do have a Patreon, though. I need to add more to it. Use um, the promo code Nick is sexy to get absolutely nothing. There is no promo code. We appreciate <laughs> you guys watching this far. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. Um, and it'll be out in a week or two once we get through all the copyright stuff. Yeah, that's the fun part. And we'll be filming the next one here next week. So thanks, yeah. guys. We'll see you.